Yo, what's going on, guys? Crispy Flakes here. So, Chris Bosh was on first take recently, and he went on the record to say that he wants to play in the NBA once again. Uh, so, last time Chris Bosh actually played was in the 2015-2016 NBA season. As we all know, he had to retire due to having blood clots, I believe, in his lungs. Um, so, yes, that was absolutely horrible. Just a very devastating thing because he just signed, like, a $120 million contract with the Miami Heat. Um, then, all of a sudden, that happened to him. I mean, you know... It, in the end of the day, man, it is his choice if he wants to play or not. I do hope he does not jeopardize his life by trying to return to the NBA just because he is only 33. That is young. I mean, he has so much life ahead of him. He has a family and stuff like that. But we are going to talk about seven NBA teams that could actually use the assistance of Chris Bosh in today's NBA. Um, so, you know, his last season that he played, he averaged 19 points, 8 rebounds, about 3 assists out there. Shot 36, 37% from 3. Really starting to master the craft of the 3-point shot. Uh, just in time, too, because as a big man, you pretty much need to be able to shoot the basketball somewhat uh, to be really effective in today's NBA. That's why guys like Kenneth Freed uh, don't really do all that well in the NBA anymore. I can't really find an NBA rotation because they just can't are not really great offensively. But Chris Bosh has always been a good offensive player. So, yeah, guys, we are going to go through these teams here. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the rosters that I think he would work on now keep in mind any team could use chris bosh these are just like the main teams that i think of uh when i think of him going to an nba team so let's look at the first one you guys see it's on the top right corner there i feel like he would fit very nicely on the milwaukee bucks and the reason i say that is because um you know he he could start at the center position just because like john henson's not having a bad season i mean 9.7 rebounds uh, about one block a game you know chris bosh is not going to average no one block a game or nothing like that but i feel like his ability to spread the court for you know guys like Giannis, chris middleton uh eric bledsoe would be greatly appreciated and greatly utilized in this offense out there i mean yes the bucks do need help offense i mean i'm sorry defensively and bosh is not going to do that but who knows man being able to uh, open up the court like that could be very dangerous so i feel like him on this team would be nicely um or you could even run him at the fourth spot and put jabari parker on the bench just for this season the reason i say that is because jabari is still coming back from an acl injury in his uh select few games he's played this season he's not been playing very well which makes sense i mean it takes a long time you know to come back from an acl injury and really get conditioned on the court and everything like that and not to mention play at an nba style level a level so you know jabari could kind of go on the bench and kind of feel his way into the game again but at the same time, you know, the same thing could be said about Chris Bosh, who has not seen the NBA core since the 2016 season. Uh, but he has stayed in shape and everything like that and has not had like a serious uh, physical injury like this outside of his medical condition. But that's a totally different thing. So, yeah, I feel like that could kind of work out. And then Jabari Parker maybe going in the next season uh, would definitely be able to be the starter of this team once again. The next team I have is the Miami Heat. Yes, guys, his former team. The reason I say that is because the idea of... Um, Hassan Whiteside and Chris Bosh is very enticing. I mean, not only that, but he gets team up with his uh, former championship teammate, Dwayne Wade. And really, his job would be to do exactly what he was saying in that interview on first take. Sit on the courts, you know, sit on the three-point line, um, shoot some three-pointers, not play any defense. Because, like, let's be honest, guys, Luke Babbitt, who, you know, might start the fourth spot. I mean, I don't think he's going to start there, but whoever does start there... Um, it's not really going to be all that great of a defensive difference anyway. So I feel like what Chris Bosh could do offensively could definitely make up for that alongside a sound white side. So I'd absolutely love to see that. So yes, former team that he uh, technically retired on could be the team that he could go back to. And, you know, the uh, Miami Heat, they are currently, what, 8th place in the uh, Eastern Conference? I mean, as far as being 8th place, they are only a few games from being like in the 4th spot or 3rd spot. So, you know, maybe make a little run right there to see what the Miami Heat could do with Chris Bosh on the squad. Him with sound white side just sounds like a good fit. Uh, next up for the next team I have, it is the Utah Jazz. The reason I say this is because he could either come on this team as a six man or he could start in, you know, in exchange for Derek Favors. Um, the Utah Jazz at the making of this video are currently on an 11 game win streak. So I could see where they don't want to mess with karma or uh, with a uh, chemistry or anything like that. I almost say karma, but that either, man, you never want to mess with karma chemistry. So putting Bosch at the four spot, much like we're playing with, playing with the sound white side, you know, Rudy Gobert makes up uh, for what uh chris bosh likes defensively you know he would stretch the floor but not only that at times chris bosh could play center and Derek favors could play power forward you know chris bosh could play with any of the big guys on this team so i just feel like that would be a nice fit if you really want to stretch things out you know things get kind of like lackluster on offense then maybe you put chris bosh at center and jay crowder at the four spot i mean there's just so many things that a floor space like chris bosh can bring to your team and like i was saying man he's 6 11 like the dude is huge that's almost seven foot it's one inch away actually guys my bitch ass math um you know follows through with that the next team i have his other former team the toronto raptors so this one's 
a little bit more of an interesting fit right there. He was a beast on the Toronto Raptors before going to the Miami Heat. Um, I, I don't know if the Raptors, who are, I believe they're currently first place, aren't they? Or if not, pretty dang close. Yeah, they are currently first place in the Eastern Conference. Uh, I'm not quite sure if they would want to mess with that chemistry right there of their team. Just because, you know, would you actually, as a Raptor fan, would you want to start Chris Bosh over Serge Ibaka or Valachunas at this point? Um, I feel like if he was to start over one, it would probably be Serge Ibaka. But even Serge is getting, you know, 13 points, 6 rebounds. Uh, he's getting one block a game. But I do feel like, you know, Serge Ibaka, he could be very utilized, um, you know, greatly off the bench. It's not like he's putting up career numbers out for the Toronto Raptors. I mean, in my opinion, those are pretty basic role player numbers. So it's not like, oh my God, they are going to bench Serge Ibaka for Chris Bosh. Or like I was saying, Chris Bosh could also be a six man on this team and just coming for some uh, offense at times. So I feel like that'd be a decent fit. Uh, DeMar DeRozan is having a really good NBA season. Uh, his three pointer, while it does go down every now and then, I mean, 33% is nothing to call mama about. So it's like even Chris Bosh's spacing would be good for, uh, along the lines of you know, DeMar DeRozan be able to cut to the basket and stuff like that out there. So another good fit, I would say. Next team I have is the Houston Rockets. Now, people are probably like, yo, Crispy, Houston Rockets getting all these damn players out there. Um, if I do remember correctly, Chris Bosh is actually from the Houston area. This is the team he was going to sign with if he did not end up signing with the Miami Heat. So, yeah, it just seemed like a nice fit. I mean, Ryan Anderson this season, who is the spot he would probably start at, averaging pen, uh, 10 points, 5 rebounds out there, shooting 38% from threes. So, you know, either Ryan Anderson can come off the bench Freaks of scoring off there, or you could even just use Chris Bosch off the bench, which might be the more like logical choice at this point of time until Chris Bosch really proved himself on the basketball court. You know, get, play about 20, 25 minutes per game. Uh, then the rest of the time, you know, got Ryan Anderson out there busting out three pointers. So you always have a floor spacer at that four spot alongside Clint Capella. I mean, you know, you go with maybe Eric Gordon, uh, having kind of be like a point guard of the team. You have Gerald Green who kind of transitions to that shooting guard out there. You got Chris Bosch, maybe pull Luke at the uh, three spot for some defense, also can shoot the three ball too. All of a sudden, that already dangerous Houston Rockets bench just got even more crazier out there, okay? Next team, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, the reason I say this, guys, is just once again, man, like Andrew Wiggins, uh, his shooting this season has been horrendous. Like, for a man that's taken, I believe, the most field goal percentage, like the most field goal attempts per game, uh, he has not really, you know, has not really translated into a great scoring stats. Around. I mean, yes, 18 points per game is nice, but it's not very efficient. So, you know, you have him out there still. Um, maybe Chris Bosh at the fourth spot will kind of open things up for Andrew Wiggins a bit more. You still have Jeff Teague, although I think he's injured right now in real life. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure Jeff Teague is injured. You still got Jimmy Buckets out there. But yeah, it's like you look at this team out there, it's kind of like what's missing? Well, maybe a really good starting power forward. Uh, just because like Taj Gibson to me, you know, averaging 12.7 rebounds this season. Those are fantastic numbers, but I feel like his game would translate very nicely to be like an energy guy off the bench, which I think every NBA team needs anyway. So yeah, I think Taj Gibson goes to the six man of this team, brings that hustle, brings that grit and grind off as a six man, like he used to do for so many years on the Chicago Bulls. Um, or once again, if you don't want to mess with chemistry, well, then Chris Bosh, you got him off the bench, and once again, you're all set. So yeah. And another team, guys, the Portland Trailblazers. So the Portland Trailblazers, for the longest time, have been searching for that third man on this team to kind of team up with Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. So is Chris Bosh quite that? Uh, no, but he's kind of better than what they have. So, you know, Aminu has been their best defensive player this season, and he's also shooting about 40% from three-pointers. So it's like you still want to find a way to start him. I feel like being 6'9", he's a quick player and everything, so we could definitely start at the three spot. Evan Turner goes to the bench. Um, I don't know why... 2K pulling bitch ass. Go, why y'all why y'all putting Derrick Rose on the roster here? Guys, Derrick Rose is not on the Blazers. No matter what you do, uh 2K always puts him on this team. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe they're predicting the future or something like that. But yeah, enough about Derrick Rose. Chris Bosch is the uh four man on this team right here. Kind of it just makes sense because Nurkic is not really a three-point shooter. He doesn't even shoot him at all. He's just an inside guy. So having Chris Bosch on the team alongside him, well, it's a nice little inside offense, inside outset, uh, inside outside offensive threat for this Trailblazers team. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much the seven teams I think he would really be a good fit on. I'm sure like the Boston Celtics, they always want you know more scoring off their bench. Golden State Warriors, if he really wants the ring chase. Um, I guess he could go to Cleveland and play alongside LeBron James. I really don't know how he fits on that team exactly. But yeah, my friends, let me know in the comment section below, which team do you feel like Chris Bosh should go to or do you feel like he shouldn't risk it and maybe just stay retired?